thank you for coming this afternoon. I've been, uh, I'm uh, really grateful to, to be here and thank you to Mix for having me here this afternoon. I would like to talk about my experience um, for the last five years with those guys <laughs> at Red Barrels. Uh, it's been uh, an amazing av adventure and I, w uh, I wanted to, to speak about um, some, all the history about it, my adventure to this um, experience doing music for video games. Um, so let's start by, by the beginning. Um, this is me when I was like 10 years. I was forced to <laughs> play piano when I uh, as a child, um, but uh, I prefer a uh, lot prefer playing to Legos because I didn't found in music at the time that I can express myself and I can express my imagination and be creative. So, um, but my first recording studio was what the this Fisher Price um, uh, recorder, and I used to just play with my brother, uh, recording some movie themes and, and television themes. And it was just fun to me to have a kind of memory about those TV shows I like in the 80s. Then something changed my life. At nine years old, I saw this movie and it blew me away. It, it was like, oh my God, what, kind of, what is this music? I have to, to know more about it. And um, I fell in love with Danny Elfman's music. We can hear an excerpt here. Then the more I, I listen to the soundtrack, the more I, I, I learn about Danny Elfman and the importance of collaboration between Tim Burton and Danny Elfman. And the more I knew about him and them, uh, I suddenly discovered Bernard Herrmann, who was his inspiration at the moment. And just for pure fun, just ha have a listen to um, Journey to the Center of of the heart uh, and in comparison comparison to uh, Batman. Batman. And the reason I show you this this afternoon is not to emphasis ma making an emphasis on the similarities in those, but the way Danny Elfman has been inspired and in never said he didn't be inspired by Herman. It was his huge inspiration. And of course, both themes will develop different ways. But to me, it was my starting point to discover Bernard Herman. And it, this leads me to another extremely great collaboration between Alfred Hitchcock and Bernard Herman. Uh, one of my favorite all-time scores uh, is Vertigo, and I would like to 
show you uh, an excerpt of it here. One of the things I, I really love in Herman music is the way he was able to support all thrillers and, and suspense music and adding to it a, a sense of death, a sense of drama, a sense of human. And if we came back if we come back to uh, to me now, um as a teenager I started to compose in those kind of music uh, like John Williams or Danny Elfman or Bernard Herrmann. And I tried to to just figure out how they, they create their music. And I was really sensitive about how the music can be effective on a screen or how can be change an image or a storytelling. So a year later, from 2002 to 2012, uh, I've been for uh, 10 years uh, doing a lot of TV shows uh, and films in Montreal, and then my, and then this. <laughs> We're coming to Red Barrels uh, in 2012. My friends, my friend Sam Gerardin just introduced me to those guys over there, and <laughs> <laughs> and, and Sam was like, he was seeing my, my career and he was like, mm, do you, w you would like to, to do uh, video game scores because I, I understand what you're doing musically. I, I've done a lot of trailers movies and, and slashers movies. And when I met those guys, it was asked by, by Red Barrels if I, I was a gamer and the answer I did it was not. So awkward moment. And and then Red Bull was were gently and just asked me if I, I liked horror movies and I said mm, not really, <laughs> but but I do love film scoring and 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 timeless orchestral music and this is the reason, this is where we connect to to this is where we just saw the opportunity to to meet each other and and, and do something together. Um, the idea of w one of the thing I, I really liked about doing the first Outlast was the connection I had with Phil because we had a lot of discussions about film score. Um, we spoke about some reference for Outlast and we immediately had a, a, a dialogue. And then we had, um, from my own uh, research, I, I just found like Alien and Alien 3 was, for me, kind of, uh, could be a, a kind of uh, inspiration for, th for the first Outlast. Then it came back, we, it, it brings me back to uh, Alfred Hitchcock again. Because for me, there was a, a, a direct sense of how he created suspense without anything like, um, Phil asked me a lot of time to create what he, s he called uh, uh, free gameplay. So I just put, a I imagine you're just walking in a corridor and you just put a music, tenseful music or stressful music. Suddenly you are like, mm, am I going to, to uh, do I have to run or do I have to, to be scared? Or So I'm, I'm music is very effective to, to tell the, the gamer or the player what to do. So um, I found it in Psycho, the music was really, really effective. And again, there was a, a sense of, I have a, an excerpt here. And in Psycho, it's really tenseful at the beginning, and then suddenly Bernard Herrmann brings the, um, 
the more dramatic score or the, the, the more melodic theme. So here is the next in, in, uh, excerpt. And this is where I base my my own inspiration for the first Outlast. It was important for me to have all the tenseful music, the stressful music, really dense, really inspired by those movies, but more contemporary music, more Panderecki, Ligeti. But it was important for me to have this melodic theme on which the player could base on or just we can base a, a, a storytelling. It was important to, at some point in the game, just point, pinpoint, oh, we are still in Outlast now. So this is <coughs> the music brand, if you want. So I'll sh I'll, I've made a, a little um, Outlast medley. And we can see the direct inspiration from Psycho. So we are at the beginning of the process. I'm starting to compose some mockups, MIDI mockups, to deliver to with barrels to to show them what my idea is. And I quickly realized that it, it it sounds so generic that in the the first month, because the good thing about making music for video games instead of film or TV is music is not post production; it's all production. <laughs> Uh, we we uh, I started uh, composing music right before the first employees were uh, hired in uh, Red Barrels. Um, I have I had privilege to to have enough time to think about uh, what will be the, the musical universe I want to create. And at the beginning, I, I started to with samples, uh, commercial samples. So I tried to 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 find an really original and 
signature sound and I felt that I was stuck in those generic samples I was using. So I was using. So um, here is a, well maybe not so important, but we I quickly realized that I, I needed to, to create my own samples quickly because the more uh, the productions advanced, um, the more I needed the, the real thing. So I focused on uh, starting r recording real instruments and making my own sample library. With those kind of sounds, I have samples here. And the objective was to, to create something truly original and distinctive. So for this is a super ball sliding on the piano strings, not that one. This is the, the, uh, the symbol with the, uh, the bow. This is the perks, hugely to like used in uh, both Outlast. And this is the Super Bowl. So I recorded a lot of small ensembles um, uh, I had privilege to have access to uh, uh, studios and just try to to explore a lot of in an, a lot of sessions uh, different kind of textures. I, I was like looking for something, but not so specific, but just terrifying. Again, those are the brasses. So it's all strange textures, and I knew it will be I will be able to just edit it, cut it, and uh, put it together to to directly compose with this stuff. Um, I studied uh, in university in uh, tape music, uh, electroacoustic, and the techniques I this I, I learned over there was a lot of editing and and tweaking, and I was like, and I had to 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 um select between uh to choose between instrumental compositions or electroacoustic and and i remember remember um just thinking about oh wait the moment i need brass orchestra w i can able i'm able to record them and and just edit and and play with them la later so um for the first outlast that was the the, the basic technique the other Part of the scoring for Outlast was the melodic and dramatic uh, parts, uh, the part that looks like uh, Bernard Emmons. So for this, I record. Um, I just wrote theme, and uh, with MIDI mockups because I knew that later I will record them at the end of the process with string, uh, basically a huge, huge uh, bigger strings ensembles, um, and then the last. Part of Outlast one was uh, working with with John. John was the the audio designer at that time, and uh, we just shared a lot of sound that we both recorded at the time. And and I used some of them in the music score, and he used uh, some of them for uh, like I have this not so famous but famous sound here. Uh, that it, uh, it's a huge characteristic of the, the first Outlast. And uh, this is the symbol with the, the bow. And John used it a lot in the, 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 the main bus uh, sound. So this screen. <laughs> At this moment, it was made during in the uh, earlier ses recording session. And when we found it, I was just like, okay, this is it. This is the, 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 main, the main bone of, of the score without the, the melodies. But in this recording, because re we tried to imitate it or did it again later, and, and we weren't able because it was a moment, and I've been very lucky to record it. And then from this, 
Harmonix, I developed all the, the, the cluster with the, the strings and the brass, and I knew that every element, because I didn't want any melodic or rhythmic elements for that kind of sounds. So I knew I was able to orchestrate it by recording other strings or brasses imit imitating this recording. And John put this sound in a lot of sound design in the, in the first Outlast. Then something really, really good happened. Uh, we, we finished the first Outlast. It was a success. And, and it, it I had opportunity to, to uh, build a studio with a friend. And I will quickly talk about this place because the soul of Outlast 2, the score, was made from those guys. And I'm not alone. And, and this is important for me to, to share it with you. So the idea, uh, we, we didn't, didn't have any business plan at the beginning, but I was with my friend in old Montreal, and we shared a studio. And it was time to to sign again. And we decided to move uh, and build a place and move quickly. But this is a place where uh, we are, whoops. OK, we are five composer and production. Oh, apparently, the system do doesn't want to show James' room. But <laughs> is he mine? OK, we passed the tone studio. Anyway, um, this is my, my composition room. And mainly, um, as we see, we are a bit geeks and uh, gear slat. <laughs> so, but the, uh, and this one also. But the idea behind was to, to create a place where there are a lot of people collaborating each other with each other, and, and it was made during the process of Outlast 2. And then at the beginning of Outlast 2, I, um, I met Frank over there. He's the guy with who I worked for two years on, the, on this project. Um, he was more than full-time on. I was like half-time. Maybe full time when you you, <laughs> you take all the hours, but um, Frank and Phil were the two guys uh, for Outlast Two. We we were like always discussing about um, the the genre we wanted. We wanted to be distinctive from the first Outlast about the orchestra. It was for me the first Outlast was to 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 do the score really uh, in a authentic way. I needed to go and, and push and push and, and go f further in my ideas. And I think at one point I went where I needed to and to, to go to be. And uh, the question I had when I started to work on the second Atlas was, am I able, and, and this, this is the same question uh, Phil and, and Frank had, uh, am I the right guy for, for this kind of sound if the sound is different? And I knew that I've done every, everything I, I could have done in the style of the first one. So the idea was not to copy myself, but to continue to uh, uh, create and, and, and use my Im imagination to, to this new world, because Outlast 2 was really different than the first one. We started to, to share ideas about the, the second Outlast in summer of 2014 and at this moment uh, because yes i really liked uh, scores when i was a teenager but i also liked nine inch nails i really liked the, the textures of it and the, the industrial factor um and uh, in 2014 it was the, the 20th anniversary so at one moment i was like just listening to it and this is a concept al album i don't know if you know it Maybe I, I give it a try if you if you're willing to. Um, it's a story about someone who, who is desperate and, and commits suicide, suicide at the end. And um, I think it was really personal to Trent Reznor, who's doing uh, movie scores now for uh, David Fincher. Um, and to me, it is a, a real piece of art. Um, when you listen to this uh, album from the start, the beginning to the end, you, you 
you live an experiment. You, you live like it's a, a real experience. You're transformed at the end. And this is why I, I call it a piece of art. Because, OK, it's really desperate. It's really aggressive. It, it, it's harsh. But I felt that I needed to, to get the player in this kind of mood while playing uh, to Outlast to, uh, during hours and hours of play. To me, the, 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 the emotion I had at the end of this album, I needed to compare it to, it was my goal to, to get the player at this emotion. I, I, I'm not speaking about the musicality of it, I'm, I'm speaking about the emotion, emotional travel, if you want. Those, was, those were the, the um, references that uh, Red Barrels needed to for their uh, Outlast tube. And I, I can give you a, a listen. I put a, I, I made a, me, a, a short medley of all those references. Looking for a, a more raw, minimalist, um, really dark, aggressive tone. In some ways, what makes the, the success of the score of the first Outlast was to, to get me in, uh, in out of my comfort zone. And I knew that I needed to do this on the second Outlast differently, but I need to, to get out of my comfort zone again to go in those dark uh, emotions. So now I'll show you, I'll ma I'll, I'll, I've made a little medley of Outlast 2. slide a little bit okay so it's pretty different than the first one no orchestra really raw really in your face um, and we tried to push it push it push it at some point I think we we arrived at a moment that Phil called me and he said okay uh, this time you, you went too far <laughs> uh, I, I, not because it wasn't good but because he wasn't able to to see a player having this kind of noise <laughs> in his head for 20, 30 minutes playing the level, you know? So I had to tone down a bit. But um, overall, it was a um, really collaborative project. Uh, we record, because 
the mood of Outlast, you're not in the, the asylum like in the first one. You're in the ghost, like a ghost village. They are all the, the cult elements, religious things. And um, there's really something about religion I needed to explore. And one of the key points was we didn't want to be uh, a copy or uh, um, to be in like the, 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 the famous choir, really religious and like the omen, let's say. Um, we wanted to stay in something really, really modern. Uh, one of the, the goal I always have when I compose music is to, to be as, as, most, uh, as much as timeless as possible. But I tried in this one to be really, really modern. Um, this is the guy at the studio just trying to, you see, it, it was all made in, in the facility instead of going outside to different studios recording ensembles. We tried to, to just be imaginative and creative with what we, we had. And it made us discovering some fabulous things. Let's say um, Sam's over here just recorded gu guitars and, uh, with a bow and trying to, to, to get new sounds from gits and, and bass and, and banjos and all that kind of instruments that are really, really popular and can could fit in this kind of universe, you know? I didn't want to use orchestral because it might be too big for the what it is, but, um, but this is our kind of example of, this is a banjo, let's say. You never listen to a banjo like this one, right? I, it's it's crazy. So um, this is uh, an ebo on a ba uh, on a bass. And again, the limit between sound design and music was thinner, but. All of this was used in intention to be music. So music has, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a pace, it's a, in this case it's a pace, it's a tension I needed to keep. Um, guitars with, with bow. <laughs> then those are my favorite. Again, guitars. And especially this one. Yeah. And then this happened. This is a, a kind of uh, Silly experiment uh, guys did create to, because at one point we, we just tried to push further and further and we, we felt we got everything we, we could with bass and guitars and except maybe uh, getting them in fire. I don't know, we didn't try it, but uh, <laughs> prepared guitar. But um, uh, so they tried to, just put a, a bass string on it with piezo mic and just a piece of wood. And the piece of wood would, was enough flexible to, to change the pitch. And it sounds really awful. Whoops. Not that scary. Or this kind of textures we can get from those. speakers and and finally the choir because yeah you know, we're still in a religious mood so I needed to exper experiment with with choirs and um, we can show we can show in our uh, other pictures of it because it, it's at the Jesus uh, it's a church in downtown and there are uh, art 
from there. So in respect for the artist, I'll just crop the picture so you can see the, the huge church in, in which we are at this moment. But there is a, a, a seven second reverb in it. So for musicians, I don't know if you know what it is, but it's like <laughs> during seven seconds. So to create textures, it's amazing. Like this is an example with the reverb. So imagine those people screaming like hell during three hours, and it was like the apocalypse. <laughs> but the, the good thing at the end of this um, made a really, really good story. Um, at the end of the recording, they just tried to uh, start to, to sing for themselves and, and start to sing Mozart. And like I said, it is important for me to put some strategic melodies in the game, like in Outlast 1. Uh, and the final of the Outlast 2 was like my, my, my baby, you know? I, I was preparing something really, really cool for it. Uh, it was a relief thing. You, you're, you're, you live a, a tense full moment during eight hours, and then at the end, it's a, a relief. So I, I wanted to benefit this relief to express musically myself. And um, if we come back to the, the idea of, uh, of the downward spiral from Nine Inch Nails, it is the, the, the song Hurt at the end of the album that is really almost peaceful, but you know, he made his choice to commit suicide. So I needed, I, I want to, to get the player emotionally to this kind of mood. But then Phil and, and Frank just put the Mozart thing at the end. And, it, and just they called me and said, hey, Sam, we, we got a good idea. We would just put it in the, at, at the end of the game. And it's amazing. So I was like, damn, <laughs> I'm not able to, to, to put my final. And my first reaction to it was like to, to fight against it, just to, no, 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 I'll, I'll, try, I'll try something. But it's a year ago. So we we're in December. Try to find another choir to, to, to compose something better than Mozart. During Christmas time, try to find a church. It's not available. So, and we needed to ship the, the score. So I went to, to Red Barrels to have a look at the scene, the final scene, and, and I almost cried. So it was really effective. And I, uh, from this moment, I was like, OK. Because it was far from a, a perfection from a composer or a musical point of view. You know, the, 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 the director, she was like, oh my god, we can't put this in this performance of Mo Mozart in a game. It's not perfect. It's some dude just recording it at the end. But there is in this performance uh, the, the real feeling of relief because they were cry uh, screaming during two or, or three hours in this church. And this was their relief at the end of the recording to just be pleased by singing this and having fun with the sef second second of uh, second uh, seven second of reverbs, so it was the perfect emotion tone at for this ending. And I was like, okay, so just don't screw it. And I think to my really tense full score, I'm bigger and bigger at the end to create this kind of gap we have. And when it, when it's the end of the game, you have this choir just singing for fun, and it's a pure relief. And and I I, I don't know if I can do spoilers here, but um, it's really really effective by the end of the game, and I have the recording here. So it's not it's far, far 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 from perfection in a performance and perfection musical point of view, but it's the right emotion again.
So you can imagine that that during let's say eight or ten hours, you're you're compressed by really really dense full score, and after this, this is the relief. Um, by the end of February or the beginning of Mar last March, um, because I wanted to to please myself by doing a, I, I've never been a, a, an artist. I, I've never done any album before. Of course, we released the, the first Outlast soundtrack, but for there was something really, really personal in this one, and I wanted to um, to benefit from the album by creating my concept album. Although it's it's uh, really tenseful music and, and harsh, <laughs> um, I thought it was possible to make something really creative and and, and telling a story from the beginning to the end and trying to, like I said, achieve this kind of, it is my uh, homage to uh, Landward Spiral in a way. It, I, I know it, it's silly, it, it doesn't sound nothing like the Landward Spiral, but I hope that people who, who listen to it um, just have a great experience about li being in this dark and hyper, uh, hyper uh, aggressive world um i've done I, i've got letters from from students who, who told me that they study while listening it i i can understand it but <laughs> fans out there really really like it and so that was the process of, of the mix with james at the studio um this is a morning it's not it's not uh the end of the day and Finally, I, I just want to, to thank uh, you to the experience, guys, because for those points, um, first, I've never wanted to, to be a, a video game composer. I, I still want to, to work for huge movies, and I, I still have this old dream. But I realized, especially this year, that a lot of projects you don't, you don't, not want, but you, it was a great surprise doing this one. Uh, the first one, and then the second one. And both were a great experience for me because I didn't expect to do it. I, I didn't, it was like, wow, it's, it's given to me. Um, and it, it tab established myself as a video game composer in Montreal, but also I've got a lot of interviews around the world, and I still have, uh, have interviews, yeah. And, and, um, and I have a, a old law professionally uh, when I, I receive a, a, a project there there is this kind of uh, there's three things um, money fun and investment if the project can bring me somewhere I can go so the law is to get two of them and both outlast was were the almost only projects I got three of them it gave me money at the end. It was a huge investment at the beginning. Um, it was great experience, a lot of fun. I discovered a lot of great people wi with who I, I work for and with. And, um, and it, it, it made me a better composer. So thank you. <laughs> Any question? Oui. Vous si, je sais pas. Yeah. Um, during the studio sessions when you were recording, did you go in uh, with musicians uh, for Outlast One in particular? Yeah. Did you go in um, with something in mind, like you knew exactly what you wanted your trumpet players to play or your string? Total experiment. It was an yeah. improv session essentially. But. At one point, I knew I wanted something disturbing. I knew I wanted something like to, to get you in, out of your comfort zone. But um, uh, of course, th there are some like um, rules. Uh, uh, if you want to, to make scary music, those uh, are, um, let's say, I if you're stuck in the, the vocal range, I it's less scarier than if you go outside or higher or lower than vocal range because monsters are big or insects are. So all the, the high pitch and, and low pitches are really effective. Um, 
stay, stay away from melodies, rhythmic, um, a lot of clusters. Those are, kind of, uh, are all the basics of what makes music feel strange and, and un uncomfortable. Um, but the thing I, I found like with the, the symbol, the, the screaming, I, I could have, like I said, I, I, I just, I rewatch, I, I watch back um, the, the movie Seven. And in this movie, they use a lot of symbols with, with both, but nothing of them sounds like this one because it is a sample. It is one shot recording, you know? So, um, but for me, the, 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 the safe zone to do this was to get something fresh, unique. And I knew I, I was able to just edit it later and put it in, in the game and see because it's the real thing, you know? It's not a, a placeholder, I put it. We started with placeholder and it wasn't effective. I, I didn't get the right feel I needed to. Just one more question. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> if maybe you could tell us a little bit more, maybe people here already know the answer, but I don't. <laughs> Relationship between a composer and a sound designer. So mm -hmm. uh, as a composer, with your vision in your mind, you know exactly what you want it to sound like, and then, um, do you ever fear losing control of how it's going to sound like when you're working with sound designers who also have their own vision? How do you unite, unite both visions and collaborate to make it sound yeah, like uh, as one? Yeah, it's about collaboration and, and having faith. And uh, yes, exactly. I love those people over there. Uh, um, I, I, and a lot of speech, uh, um, sp uh, speaking about like a lot of coffees and, and just, OK, how do you see this scene? And I get I, I I give my input and they give them at the end. Phil will decide or with barrels, let's say. But um, it's a collaborative way, and, and and Frank is better than me to integrate music into video games. So it's this we can think about the integration and technical stuff. But I think the the um, the place I'm the best is about trying to find the right emotion musically, and then. Th but that's it, yeah. Thank you. Uh, you show a photo of uh, you with your modular synth. I know you started working with that in the last years yeah. also, and that it changed your creative process. It brought you somewhere else that you mm -hmm. maybe you less explored before. So can you tell us on in what way did it change your creative thinking? Absolutely. Um, the modular stuff, yeah. Because we didn't tweak the sound that much in the first one. And it was definitely a way I, I needed to take and explore in the second outlast. So we started with distortion, effects, pedal effects from for guitars. And then like all the, the substance uh, or software we can have to, to tweak the sound and, and distort it. Because I needed to, my, my goal was to explore with really singular instruments and then get them from, from that common place everyone knows to the other place that is really strange and oh is this a guitar or is this a bass or and and the idea behind it was to to um, again to put me out of my comfort zone so when the modular stuff uh, in in an outlast case it was to to tweak sounds so i didn't use sine wave or i didn't generate did a lot of uh, i didn't synthesis but i tweaked that I modified a lot of uh, sounds, uh, guitars, uh, old string samples from Outlast One. I didn't want them to sound the, the same way, or it was a, a way for me to to give a new life to to those sounds. Yep. Um, this might be a question for Frank, since you mentioned this. Uh, I'm curious about the integration of the music and uh, the process that went into that, and even the collaboration there. Integration is 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 thing. Yeah. Oh, the So the integration part's a large question, I guess. But uh, no, no. Baseline was just to get as much creative juice from this guy to try and fit as much into our dynamic music systems and our, our different states for AIs and for, for whatnot. But uh, no, that, that's where the collaboration came into play. A lot of the 
binaural recordings and symbols and different weird stuff that I went to a few of the recordings uh, just with the choirs and with that type of stuff try oh, and integrate yeah. that and make it as seamless as possible uh, through through the whole process there but I, uh, I remember uh, just a quick uh, uh, a quick one I remember uh, what we were in a session I think it's the, it's the first one uh, at the studio and uh, at one point we just moved the table and it sounds fabulous <laughs> and there was a tone in it and and a pitch in it and it was able for me to, to sample it and just play with it and the table is a, a, a again it's another kind of surprise that happens and and you just see and you take it and okay that will be there yeah but sure. again the integration was uh, and, and it's a fun uh, uh, it's a fun game too it opens a lot <coughs> opens up a lot of doors for weird stuff and weird sound design to get a bit of that musical part into the sound design and to try and push that uh, as much as possible through the music. Uh, the music was, it's challenging to get those, all those states with this type of music and with this, uh, it's a, the challenge was there a lot and to get all that uh, um, madness into something coherent that you can stand for a few hours of gameplay. Uh, but no, no, with the with the team we have at uh, Red Barrels, again, everybody pitched in to try and make it as uh, entertaining as possible without getting too much into that repetitive uh, loop. Uh. I, I, I realize um, lately that we delivered almost 10 hours of musical stuff. I, it's not tunes, it's not complete piece of music, but it's just part of, okay, Frank, I've tried this, do you feel that this could help or or not or we did i delivered to them every single experiment i did because we never knew when it would be efficient 